Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how you can add support for as many languages as you want in your Unity game using the new localization package. Previously, you would have either had to have made your own system for this or maybe downloaded one off the asset store, but now Unity has their own built-in system. It's actually really easy to use and it's really powerful what you can do with it. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. But first I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. So the first part is that we'll need a Unity project and this has to be using 2020.2 or later. When you're watching this, it's obviously very new. This only came out, it was only available to the public a few days ago. So you'll need to go to your Unity hub if you want to have a go now. Go to the installs and add latest pre-release 2020.2. The patch after doesn't really matter too much. And then once you're using 2020.2, make a new project using that. I've gone ahead and used the universal render pipeline template. It really doesn't matter. All we'll be doing is showing some UI text that basically changes based on the language settings. Now we can start importing the package. So to do that, we can go to our file explorer. If, if we were to go to the package manager normally, it won't show up yet. They actually haven't added it here. So we're going to have to add it manually. But if you're watching this in the future, chances are it will actually be on there. So we can go show in explorer and we can go down to our packages. And we have this manifest JSON, which if you open up in a text editor, it'll then tell you, if I zoom in, here are all the packages you currently have. And all we need to do is add the localization package. So I'll be linking this down below. It's a Unity page here. And it tells you, for example, you know, right now, this is how you add it by adding this line here. So just go and copy this line or type it out. It's up to you. I'll we'll close this. And we can paste it in at the top, like so. Just remember to put a comma on the end so that it you know, compiles and it's happy with all the other packages. So you can save the text file, close this, close this, and now Unity will import it. Now that that's done, we want to make a folder to store all this stuff in. So let's right click, create a new folder, localization. And we want to then go up to our project settings. So if we go edit project settings. We have a localization thing here on the side now. It tells us we have no localization settings. So let's create and I'm gonna put it in the localization folder and click save. And now it's made us this. It tells us here we have no locales and a locale is basically just a language that you support. So we can go locale generator and it shows you all the ones you can add here. And I'm sure there's probably a way to add custom ones in case what you're looking for isn't supported, but this should support pretty much everywhere you want. And all we need to do is start adding them. So let's add English first. So we'll add EN and we'll scroll down. Here we go, we'll add English. And then we'll add two more. We'll add, let's say, French. So we can add French. And there's also the different dialects too, in different regions. And we can add Spanish, let's say. Okay, so I've ticked all those and I can click generate. It's gonna ask me where to generate. So over in localization, I'll make another folder. You can call this locales or languages or whatever. I'll call it locales like they do, locales. And I wanna select that as my folder. If we actually look down at the bottom left now, in the locales folder, you see the different languages and you can always come along later and add more. And over here, I'm not quite sure what this is about, the command line locale selector. I'm guessing you can write some code here to check, like, I don't know, the language of the machine they're using to change the default. But if you wanna just change the default in general, this is where you set it. So by default, English is the, is the default when you run the project and build. So I'll of course be doing more tutorials on this where I will, for example, we can build some in-game UI to allow the player to change their settings for the language. Right now, we can just change it in the editor over here. It's really easy They give us some, some little UI to use, but I think that's only for the editor, not for actual players in the build. And we also obviously want to know how to do it for textures and voice lines as well. You can change audio sources to be audio clips to be localized too, but we want to do it now just for text. So how do we do that? Let's actually create the text first. So if we go over here, I've noticed for some reason my create menu doesn't have UI on it anymore. It's a bit odd. So let's just create an empty game object. And if you want, you can use the built-in Unity text component or Text Mesh Pro. I use Text Mesh Pro. It really doesn't matter what you use here. Now, of course, we need to add a canvas to, for this to be on. So let's also create an empty canvas. I really don't know why uh, the UI stuff is just missing off here. So we've got our canvas and we probably want a scalar too. This is what's normally on here. Um, so like screen space overlay. 
And let's just fill in some stuff here. This isn't important as long as you just have some UI to work with. Now our text mesh pro, let's put in, for example, just the word hello for now, there you go. I'm gonna scale that to the screen, uh, put it as centered and just increase the size to like 200, that'll do. So all we really want to do is have this word hello be language dependent. So obviously it can go from hello to hola to bonjour based on the language. And how do we actually do that? Well, it's quite easy actually. We just need to, well, let's, let's minimize this because it's just in the way. And we want to add a component they give us called localize. And you see audio clip, sprite, string, texture. So we want string. And then on here, we can actually um, select a string from this table, but we don't actually have a table yet. So we can create a new table. And it gives us this bit of UI. And now we want to, uh, we want to create a new string table. Let's, let's give it a name called uh, UI text and create a string table. And this is just so you can sort it into different tables. Let's go localization, make a new folder called tables, select it. And now we get this. And this is actually really cool. It's normally if you were doing this, you might use like Excel or some you know other software to fill all this stuff in, but now they've got their own UI. So all we need to do is add, a, add an entry and give it a key. And the key is just how we identify what the text is. So this will be probably in the language of you as a developer, probably in English, and then you'll have the translations over here. So we'll say the key could be YouTube, let's say YouTube test. Then in English, I want it to say hello. In French, I want it to say bonjour. And in Spanish, I want it to say hola. Okay, those are the different translations. And we'll get onto this smart bit in a second, but we'll leave it as it is right now. And all we need to do is save, close. If we go back to our text element, we see here now we can actually select on this drop down UI text YouTube test. Now, all we need to do is tell it what to do based on the language. So, update string here will be triggered. It's a Unity event, and it'll be triggered whenever, well, one, the game starts and English is selected. And when we change language to be French and Spanish, this will also get updated. And it passes through a string, which is the string that you should display. So, all you need to do is drag in the Text Mesh Pro component and go to the text at the top. And that's it. It just will simply change the Text Mesh Pro text to be the string coming through. So, I think we should clear the string by default so it's just empty and we should hit play. And by hitting play, it's actually loaded up hello in English. And if I look at the top right here, I've got this bit of editor UI and I can actually change to the other supported languages. So I can change to French and I'll change to bonjour and I can change to Spanish and I'll change to hola and it works perfectly. And this is perfect for static strings, you know, words that are just gonna be the same all the time. So for example, the word hello, you just have to do hello in all the different languages. But you might also have dynamic strings, ones that have other words in. So for example, your uh, NPC might have a greeting that has your player name in, but greetings in different languages work differently. You know, the position of the name and all that kind of stuff. You want to also obviously put your actual player's name into the text. So how do you do that? Because that's what I was on about with the smart. So if we take smart, what it actually does is it allows us to put in variables into the string. So let's think of a variable name. Let's just say a player name. So in t inside curly brackets, we can say in here, player name. And you want to write it just how your variable would be. So I've done player lowercase and then name with an uppercase N. So it's gonna be hello player name, um, bonjour player name, and hola player name. And obviously if the different language you're trying to support has different grammar, you can put the name wherever else, or you could you know, get rid of the name or whatever. It allows you to do whatever you want. And all we need to do now is actually give it a way to grab this name. So to do that, we need to actually have some code to grab it from. So if we go back to our scripts folder. Let's just make one called uh, test data. And we'll open that up. Inside test data, we'll get rid of the start and the update. And all this does is it will actually use that variable name that we just typed in, and it will try and find that variable name on a class on this object. So if we type public string player name, equals let's say Dapper Dino, then it will be able to find this and it will grab the name Dapper Dino. And sadly right now, as far as I'm aware from my testing, you can't do serialized field private strings. It can't find them, even though they show up in the editor, it will only find public. So I'm gonna get in contact with the people in the team and I'm gonna ask them, you know, see if they can get support for that or I'll post it on the forums. But for now, we'll just go with public. So this is a public string, get rid of the usings we don't need and head back into Unity.
Now there's one final step, which is going over to the object where we need it. And it wants us here to pass in reference to the script to grab the thing off. So we'll say argument size one, and let's add on the test data script. So the test data script is here. And all we do is just drag that in. And now it knows to check that for the string player name. If we now hit play, it'll say, hello, Dapper Dino, and then French, bonjour Dapper Dino, and hola Dapper Dino, and it all works. And obviously, like I said, with this, we could easily go back to the table. So let's go text, uh, go to the table. I'm not sure, here we go, that's the easiest way to get to it, I guess. I could say, for example, in English, it has a bit after it as well. It has an exclamation mark for some reason. Well, in that case, then obviously, when I test it now, it'll just, it'll just work. Based on the language, it'll just say in English, hello, Dapper Dino, exclamation mark, then French, and then Spanish. So it all works perfectly fine. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I tried to keep it quite short and simple so that you could get a quick understanding of how it works. It's very intuitive. I didn't, it didn't take me very long to figure out how it worked from scratch. And hopefully from you seeing this video, you can also get it to work in your projects too. Let me know down below what you want to see next and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before we go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Louis Ramos, Jake Nixon, Benjamin Hilda, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Melvin, John Selig, David McDermott, Exit, Bidadai, Dustin Miller, Rack, and Yoris Letter. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below, as well as links to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could just help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.